In this video, we're going to talk about stages of family development. And the reason why this is going to be important is because you want to kind of understand that different families are at different stages of development. And you may say, well, why is that important? It's important because when you're conducting offers or you're trying to appeal to people, many times they're going to perceive the value of what you're offering based on their stage of family development. And you can find people in 2022 to where they still don't have a complete or a whole family. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. But that lack of a complete or a whole family will start to impact the way they perceive opportunity in the world because different families are running different programs or there is no program, which is their program. You have families in the world where everybody's just waking up in the morning and they're trying to figure it out. There is no strategic goal that we're trying to get as a family. You have families in which they allow certain people in their family to do certain things that are detrimental to the family and nobody addresses it. And you see this played out in social media. You see this play out in your day to day life. You've seen this played out in high school. You've seen this played out in college based on what type of family a person comes out of. It really determines how they perceive certain things. And one of the ways in which you want to kind of understand that or one of the reasons why you want to understand that, because now it starts to make sense why people react to situations, the way they react to them, the why they take certain actions in the world is a difference between somebody doing something that's going against their family development plan and somebody doing something because their family does not have a development plan. Those are two different scenarios. The first person can reverse their situation and go back to the plan. The second person, they don't have a plan to go back to. And therefore, the second person is just out here in the world trying to figure it out. And one of the things that we've done in this society is we've devalued family, which means that we have more people that are just essentially running a plan given to them by people outside of their family. Their internal group doesn't have a plan. They're running a plan and operating a plan based on what another group of people have created for them. And in mainstream American society, that plan normally is going to just turn you into a consumer. Your goal is just to sit here and consume and consume and consume. And that's the plan. And there really, a lot of times there's not a plan past that. And that's why we see so many Americans, they just consume with their own consumption. They don't have any other goals outside of that is how can I put myself in a position to consume more than I consumed last year. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this Laws of Game video. So this is going to be the preview video. If you want to get the full video, you got to get into the Patreon. It's relatively inexpensive in comparison to the value. And if you believe that the price is greater than the value, I mean, you can just quit after the first month. However, I wanted to kind of get you to kind of understand how different families can perceive their goals. Because if you don't come from an intact family, if you don't come from a relatively strong family. You may not understand a lot of the things that I'm talking about because I'm coming at you from the standpoint of that your family has a development plan and no family's perfect. So let me give an example from my family. One thing I noticed in my extended family is that we don't have a lot of communication. So one of the efforts I've made is to make sure that I speak to people in my extended family that actually do want to talk to me. And therefore, I will just randomly call a member of my extended family and just try to ask them, you know, talk to them for 15, 30 minutes and just catch up with them. Why? Because I understand that really powerful families is not just the um, the internal family, but it's also the extended family that's strong. Therefore, if I want to do something with my extended family and I haven't spoken to them in 10, 15 years, it can be difficult. Now, everybody in my extended family doesn't see the things the way I see it because that's not something that they've been taught. But one thing I've noticed is that with a lot of really strong families is just not that internal family. It's the whole extended family that has a level of strength and they make sure they keep lines of communication open amongst each other because you don't ever know when maybe you and your first or your second or even your third cousin need to try to work a deal or to put something in position. And now you have the relationship that has been built over time. So it's not the first time you're talking to them. And that's something I wanted people to really understand. Therefore, Hopefully that this video adds some value to your situation and maybe potentially gives you a new perspective. But I talk to people all the time. And one of the things that I can notice just by the words that are coming out of their mouth, just by their perspective on the world 
it often gives up what stage of family development that they're at. And they may not know that people know that about them. Right. A lot of these narratives that you hear on social media, you're literally flagging what stage of family development that you're at because successful families don't have people in their family that think the way about some of the things that people talk about on the internet. So you're really advertising that you are at a stage of family development that is very, um, I would say, don't want to use the term primitive, uh, but I would say is very uh, startup. We'll call it that. You're at a startup stage. The challenge for a lot of people in America and really all across the world is they never get out of that startup stage. Every generation stays in that startup stage. And what's interesting is that a lot of people um, on this on YouTube and on social media have come up with these solutions. However, you have to understand is that they're still not talking about family development. So family development is not always the immediate satisfaction. It's not what I can get all the time. It's often what things can I do so somebody gets a benefit when I'm no longer here. This is how family development historically has been planned out. A lot of this, I want the I want the immediate success based on my interactions and my decisions is not often a solution to family development issues, but that's how people perceive it. Why? Because they don't know any better. They don't come from that type of scenario where their family actually has a development plan. Therefore, they jump on social media or jump on, uh, you know, YouTube and they get taught single factor analysis or they get taught, you know, single uh a binary solution is a straight line solution to the problem. And that's just what they buy into because that makes sense because they don't know any better. They don't have anybody to give them any alternate information. And then therefore, they just become a disciple or an evangelist for that thing. And they often don't even implement it in the real world to find out whether or not it actually works. And that's why I tell you, when I speak to people all the time, I can often tell what stage of family development that they're at. And people that come from different type of families, they can tell what stage of family development that I'm at. It's very obvious when you know what it looks like when you talk to a particular person. So hopefully you get some um, value from this particular preview video. And like I said, if you want the long form video, it's going to be uh, in the Patreon. Let's check it out. How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. And let's get into our laws of game. And what we're going to talk about is stages of family development. And this is going to be really important because we can be in a scenario where we're trying to do something with somebody and we don't understand why it's not taking it. First reason, because the person just doesn't want to do it. Right. That's the first reason. Second reason can sometimes be they may not understand what's going on. And the third reason be they don't understand what's going on because every family is at a stage of what I call family development. And I want you to really understand what that means because it's something that's not really talked about inside of the United States, but it's real. The lie of the United States is that if we just give people opportunity, they can take advantage of it because it's offered. What our understanding is that every family in the United States can be at different stages of family development. So what do I mean by that? If you look at the Bush family, if you really go do their research, they have been getting money right literally before World War II. You can go do research and find out like the Bushes was doing deals with people in Europe pre-World War II and they was getting a lot of money out of these deals. And they just stayed in position all this time, became went to Texas, became governor, became president. What we don't, people don't talk about is the fact that the senior father, who I think is deceased now, he was director of the CIA. You don't just become the director of CIA just cause. That's a job you get because you know people. The Bushes are at a stage of family development that majority of families inside the United States are not. Therefore, just because you give a person opportunity, they may not even understand what they need to do with the opportunity because why? They're not at a stage of family development to where they even understand how that actually works. And this happens to a lot of people. We can look at another family. So let's look at... Uh, because I know they're celebrities, so I know people know who they are. Jay-Z and Beyonce, right? They're at a stage of family development, okay? Where they're going, right, with their income and with their wealth is going to put them at another stage of family development after they're no longer here. 
So what they're building for their children is going to put their family at a whole nother stage of family development. And really that's going to play out when they're gone. So if you look at where Jay-Z came from, how he was raised, but even where Beyonce came from, she came from like a working class background, right? She wasn't in poverty, but she comes from like a working class background. She started at one stage of family development. And then what they were able to do through the entertainment industry is put themselves at another stage of family development. And unlike most entertainers, they have figured out how to keep it. A lot of entertainers make the money, but they don't keep it. And it's because of, they don't understand, right? How to maintain that situation because of the stages of family development. You take another family and you allow them to get access to that type of financial success. And they'll take that and turn that into a much bigger situation, right? And one of the challenges is that most people, because of their stage of family development, they think the way to become successful is through entertainment. The majority of people that are financially successful in this particular American society don't get through entertainment. That's the minority of people. But it's the lack of family development that makes people think, well, this is the only way I'm going to become successful. And what I want you to understand is that you should look at your own life and ask yourself, based on my family, where are we at? You shouldn't do it to blame nobody. You shouldn't do it to, to try to make nobody look bad. You should ask yourself, based on where my family currently is at, what stage of family development are we, are we really at? I know everybody on the internet wants to make it seem like they're getting money like that. That's cool. Do this by yourself on your own. Take a day off, sit back and say, okay, looking at my family, looking at my parents, looking at my grandparents, where are we at as a family? And the reason why this is important is because it'll start to really get you to understand how you see certain stuff. There was a guy who used to play basketball for Memphis back when Calipari was coaching for them. This is back on the team that had Derrick Rose on it. And they were talking about this one guy and how he reacted to a situation. And Calipari told the media, he says, this guy is the first person in the history of his family that has even graduated high school. Now we're talking about like the early to mid 2000s. And we're talking about a guy in the history of this guy's family. He's the first person to even get out of high school. So we're talking about K through 12, right? And this is what Kyler Perry was getting. The way this guy's going to respond to things is different because in reality, his family's really not that developed. Doesn't make him a bad person. Doesn't mean we should look down on him and his people. It just means they're really not that developed. They have not been able to really tap into a lot of the opportunity inside the United States. So he goes from being the first person in his family to graduate high school to also being the first person in his family to go to a college, right? So he's breaking big new ground for his family. And so a lot of this stuff that he's being confronted with is brand new and he may not have the information inside his head on how to navigate a lot of these situations. And like I said before, is that we see everything through the entertainer, but the problem is that they're the minority of people that are gonna be faced with these type of scenarios. You can have a person to where you're trying to help them do something and you present things to them and you wonder why they don't take to it. It's because they may not even understand what to do with it. Going back to the guy who was the first person in his family to get out of high school. Then he became the first person to go to college. I'm not the biggest fan in the world of college. I was talking to somebody the other day about, you know, they were trying to get their children into college and they were saying like, you know, they got a certain budget that they can spend and everything else of that. They're trying to figure out how to get some money from the school. So that the, the children are going to be limited to what schools they can go to just based on how much money, because they don't want their children to go into massive debt to go to school. So they're telling their children off the gate. These are the schools you're going to be able to go to because that's what we can afford to pay. And then where we may be able to get some money. What we don't want you to do is a loan out a hundred grand to go to school. They don't want their children leaving school with debt. Because these are the thing that, that, that can impact negatively impact family development is that school debt. I may not be a big fan of them doing that, but you got to understand for many people inside the United States, going to college is a stage of family development. It's going to be hard. You'll be hard pressed to find any of the uh, really successful families inside the United States and members of that family have not gone to college, right? You'll be hard pressed to find that. If you look at a lot of the prominent families, I'm talking on the, I'm not talking about from the entertainment side. I mean, from the business side, the, the families of people that own the majority of the real estate inside the United States, the families of people that got large energy holdings, uh, the families of people that are really involved in business, the Waltons, people of that nature, you're going to be hard pressed to find members of that family that did not go to a college or a university, it's just hard pressed, right? And 
because that is a stage of family development, right? Now, they go to school for different reasons than a lot of other people go to school. A lot of us go to school because we think the education is going to open up this big door for us. And many times they're going to school for networking. But if you look at guys like Peter Thiel, Peter Thiel went to Stanford, right? The CEO of uh, Palantir, he also went to Stanford. So what they did is they went to Stanford for networking opportunities, right? They didn't go to Stanford to get the Stanford degree to use that as a way now to open up doors. They just built a network through going to colleges because the guy that was went to Palantir, he went to Stanford, then he went to another school to get his PhD over there in Europe. So they're going to school. I think he got a PhD in philosophy, something that you can't even really get employed in, but he got to become CEO of Palantir. Why? Because he knew Peter Thiel from Stanford. So they went to school to get the network, to get the relationships. That's another stage of family development. When you stop going to school just to get the education, but you start going to college to get the network, that's another stage of family development, right? And that's what a lot of times we don't understand. And one of the things I had to learn is that I can offer somebody something and they don't get it because I'm coming from a different position of life than maybe they're coming from. And so what I may be trying to do is leapfrog them up three or four stages of family development. What I hate for people though, is I see that they're getting stagnated. So let me give an example.